and then you just do it right from there. Banning the Claude, statistically, because Claude is the tendency here for Omega, but yeah. that is an oversight. I don't think Claude was a clear choice for Smart Omega. It's too out there. You have a Beatrix. Please be a ball. You either go ball ball or Paquito or Yuzo here, honestly. Yeah. The fighter. You see, about 25 seconds here for Coach Pakbet. I'm gonna be surprised if this is better than the pick for Smart Omega. <laughs> <laughs> All of us will be very surprised. I am gonna, I am gonna be surprised. Actually, Boxa is still up. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, Boxa was oh, uh, yeah. snuffed the whole Ignored. game. Ignored. The yeah. whole series. No, okay, two, just get two. Just get two. Okay, it was. Oh uh, yeah, it was banned first thing. It was banned in the opener. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it was. There's a Lunox. The Lunox. There's a Lunox. What? <laughs> Man, if I know anything, I know that the Filipino savage loves his Lunox. Yeah. And the thought now here for Omega is, hence why I suggested the Lunox for the higher in the first place. There's a. This is the other way of stamping that dominance here, which is. If they can, they're relying on the possibility of them getting that picked off combo. And now we are going to be seeing something crazy here because they picked up a grab. Oh! Franco! Now Bobo and Goomba sounds really good. Wait, 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 wait. How easy? Yeah. How easy, Bowman? Yeah. They're evolving too soon. This is literally your college kid. This is, this is your kid at 12 going to college. It's, it's a Joe Jungle and Jungle at the Okay, all right, all right. I, this is a show match. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's not a show match. It's a show. It's a show. We are being sure. treated to a show, I did. ladies and gentlemen. I, I woke up today. I did not expect to see this. Honestly, that the Echo, I can get behind on. That's a smart Omega. This is. This looked like what Grandma was saying earlier. They had. They have two more games. If they lose this, okay. actually no, one one safe game. All right. Yeah. Here's the thing. But this is risky. If if Omega wins this and they win with this draft, confess to your crush that you like him. That's it. Because if this can happen, anything is possible. Oh, uh, one more look. One more look. Is that? Barangay Omega, they're split up, they're split up. Some of them were shouting like, yes! Some of them were like, yo, 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 yo what? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm seeing some uh, perplexed faces in the crowd right now. They're like, hmm, what, what are we seeing? Are we sure with the split? Is it, isn't this a bug or anything? But I kind of understand the Alice pick. It's more team fight oriented. And I, I uh, get the idea that Smart Omega will want to fight. But this system behind Echo's draft, they can just snowball and the game, constantly pressure the jungle, constantly just take enemy resources and fight whatever the Beatrix is online. You know what? Minus the jungle pressure, I have to add, minus the jungle pressure, I feel like that's the same line of thinking Omega's going into this match. They're not looking at this uh, as a loon knocks and scales into the late game. They're looking at this lineup as a lineup that has very strong uh, complements each other. Yeah. Capability that complements each other so well that can make this loon knocks and save your scale so fast. I love it. I get it. It's basically just, we can go on forever. We can just yeah. keep going. We just keep going. It's a lot of skirmish potential again on the side of Smart Omega. And again, pick off is really, really crucial here. The jungle choke, it's pressure enough, and then there's also the Atlas. And the jungle choke is something that it's really hard to annoy when he is taking enemy, I, I mean, uh, when he's taking his own jungle, because he can set up for ticks, he can set up for the, uh, the, you know, the potential skirmish in favor of Smart Omega. So I kind of feel like Echo will have a hard time in terms of contesting, but again, this is still a Balmond and a Franco. These two heroes is, uh, you know, is known as very frustrating to play against in the early game because Bamod will just be able to farm faster than you and the Franco will just be near you when you're jungling. You're, he's just gonna watch you. They have two retributions. Exactly! Yeah, lethal counter and the retribution. But here's the thing, am I overthinking this? Am I am I wrong to feel this way? Because this is literally way off of what we expect from Carl DC. Oh yeah. Already game one and game two he's been trying to change. Is, is the third time a charm or is it too much too late? For, for me, it's I will still stick to my thinking of this is something that Echo needed to do. So I'm not going to say too much that like, nah, you changed way too quickly. Mm -hmm. But more of, yes, I agree with you, the second point, that you changed too late. Yeah, Maybe a... these should have uh, shown up more in the regular season. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this may as well be it. Echo needs to win this or it's over. They took that shot, and they went down. Omega, at match point, going up against 
Echo, Yowie, gets oh. Ryzen, does not reset the ball, but it does give him a little more time. Renzio cutting hard bottom lane. Yeah, he's already prepped. Whatever, uh, you know, Carly just steps down to take his orange buff. It's here on his there, so that's going to be a big problem here for Echo. Chato is looking at Carly. He gets the little wonder, but also, again, d -Rock is in the position to contest the Bauman if he ever wants to take his orange buff. Yeah, and this is a Grok that knows that he might be falling a bit behind in terms of the damage. So to compensate, he actually picked up the higher drive. It's an assassin emblem Grok, and that will be full damage build. It's really hard to play the, uh, you know, the weapon master here on the Grok, because again, there's a Lunox and the Savior on the other side, so you need to itemize for the magic resistance as well. So, you know, the high drive makes sense, because you still get the additional damage from the other. Yeah, and of course, the... Uh Potential for isolation. But look at Chapnu, Renzio as well. Flicker spent up already. Nobody home for Yaoi's hook. And Carl Tizi and 3 Martizi. This time it's their duo making rounds in bottom lane. Yeah, again, faster pacing for Echo. He's just going to have a good time here on the battle for Carl Tizi. Now the turtle is going to be next, so the next objective here for Echo. And I don't think Smart Omega will like to have all that. Oh, look at this early engagement. Rising with the way of the dragon. Knocking out Yaoi. That's one man down. Carl Tizi with the help of three Mars. You're the tail takes down Chaknu. So it's a man to man trade. Four on four, possibly? I wonder. How easy he is rocking the no demon way. slayer. It's so hard for Ryzen to do this. Of course, how easy to secures the turtle. Ryzen in trouble. He's gonna go down one more swing from how easy can Ryzen run away. Down goes Renzi on the back line. Yeah, we can burn the kill. That's two for Echo. Three to one. Three Martizi able to find that opportunity for Echo with that ultimate two man stun yep. onto Omega. Insane stuff coming out here from Echo. Again, they have the advantage when it comes to pacing the tempo and the objective control over Smart Omega. This is where things start looking really scary for Smart Omega. If, if you are the chosen as much as possible, you want to get a lot of pickoffs. But in front of objectives, it's hard to do it out against Echo. There's a lot of things going on for them. The ability to stop the Cho and Jax with a wild charge alone. That, uh, that's going to allow Carl to secure a lot of these useful objectives. Man, oh man, look at that clock of destiny He's so quick on Kurt. Yeah, three minutes in. And my question is who's going to pull the trigger first here in this gold lane uh, matchup? Oh. Look at the positioning right now. And even without those two there, oh, oh. that's going to be old. Okay. Fight, Iron Oak, and uh, Bloody Hunt. Guess and well, oh. perfect match, helping him survive. Oh. Curtis throws out the umbrella to no avail. Three by he's knocked out off camera by the captain. I think that's a little oversight here for Randy. He thought that he had damage to take out the Atlas. Chapno, what a man of skill. He didn't even pop flicker. Nope. Chapno. So Echo right now needs to establish a huge, huge lead against Mark Omega so they can secure the early finish in this game. Yep, or else pay the price of. This is something else. Here we go. Three more easy. A lot of pressure on him. How easy. Somewhere else on the map. Takes that turtle. Renzio with you some strike. Turns it on to three more easy. But if there's anything we know about the new Earth and Force onto the Grok, he has the wow. physical defense in spades. Could not save his turret for the life of him. Um, great trade, I think. Um, would you guys agree? A turret for a turtle? An excellent trade. I feel like maybe Omega from a few weeks back. Would have rather get Ryzen and Renzo after the chase after three bar, but now Omega says no. We'll focus on the objective. We'll trade and get that tower. This is really interesting. Ryzen with the war axe. Usually, when we see uh, you know dual junglers, they always go for the blade of emphasis. Especially now that it's buffed, it, it no longer resets on minion hits. So it's really crucial for Ryzen to uh, you know sit inside the team fight for so long to maximize the effect yeah. of the war axe, but that that is not the usual way for you to play Joe. So oh. I think that's gonna become a factor here for Sparta Mega. Hold that thought. Move up and stop late. Telra in trouble first eats a dawning light. I think it's blasted by Benny Cutie with a Wesker Hulk. Uh, he does manage to survive by using uh, the uh, order of brilliance at the right time. By long enough in team fights and secures a pick off on these key shields on the side of Echo. Looking at the map right now, interestingly, Kelda just spell vamped the hell out of that last wave. It's <laughs> back to full health. Um, map control put over to Omega, despite Echo being up ahead by about a thousand gold. 
the turrets uh, and, and the way that the waves are managed, it, it's all Omega. Well, except top lane, here we go, that they do send four men up there with call. The uh, Echo really needed to do that, especially with this turtle coming up. Won't be surprised if Omega will not get the optimal position here, because look how fast it's going down. Oh, now he with the way of the dragon, answered into the loving hands of Renzio as he threw him up. Uh, but again, quickly, just as much, Echo takes that turtle. So, a dude for turtle, uh, I think that, that is a wash. Yeah, time and time again, this is how Smart Omega plays. Whenever you are looking to get something, they always find something in return. And they found Yaoi. Fortunately for Ryzen, he was really in a good position at that moment. Now Chantlo is about to find Yaoi again. Fortunately, no response whatsoever. And here we go, Ryzen with the Molten SN. I think he's going for that tank route, which I believe is going to be crucial here for their late game assurance and guarantee. Because this is the win condition. The longer the fights, the better it is for Smart Omega. Because it can set up an amazing play from Chaku. Oh, Chaku here. Gonna get blasted. Lethal counter. All but the kitchen sink thrown at him. Quick take out on the Atlas. Oh, Echo has to watch out for things like that. Because if, this ha if that moment happened later in the game, Keller was just there and he would have been able to blast it. But still, that was a like great it. call for Echo to go. Yes! Dawning light! Look at the damage! Look the on the captain! They do get the push, but it is going to come with a cost of three more and Kurt Teezy's life! Two Teezy's down for Omega! Oh, the pull! Another one could be Terra! Yeah. It's a double kill for the Filipino Savage! It is the tank show that is really crucial here for Smart Omega, but also you have to take note of the damage output of this savior. Etu Max at 8 minutes in with one dawning light took out three 50% HP bars. Oh my goodness. And we're one and, a, one and one half hero. Yeah, <laughs> one and a half, 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 half hero. <laughs> and this is why like, I wasn't surprised that Kelro picked up that Luna. It's crazy when you think about it, but dude, but we were, whatever we've been saying this entire series, come on, never doubt. Different. Don't doubt Pop Ben. Yeah, don't doubt Pop Ben. It's, if I'm not mistaken, the last team to actually do something like this, I'll have to go back to my records. It might actually have been Echo to rock a uh, magic user in the gold lane and then just to amplify the capability of two main da magic damage dealers as your main condition for ending it by the mid. I think that, I think that was Omega. It was Keller that played it as well. I think this is the second time we're seeing Keldra on the Lunox. Yeah. Right, right. Oh! oh! There's Hulk on the Ryzen. The answer back. The Dawning Light. Ryzen's gonna bite it. And they go for the Conceal. Who are they hunting for? Chaknu. Spotted by Dream Marteezy. Lord. See, still continues. Many Beauty taking this major river buff. Or major river bush, that is. And that pushes Benny Cutie out. Still three members of Echo. Biting down on the, the turtle. Mega says it's not worth it. Give it over. That's a really crucial kill that Echo got. It was rising. Again, this is the walking win condition for Smart Omega. Chuck was not in position to reinforce for Smart Omega to take that fight against Echo. And again, the advantage goes to Echo whenever it's the useful objectives that are being contested. Now, Smart Omega, they can defend this Lord because of the, the amount of team fight that they have. It's going to take a lot for Echo to break in to crack the base of Smart Omega. Yeah, and what we're seeing right now is if Omega cannot get Echo or surprise Echo, they probably won't be going in for an initiation. If Echo are positioned well, if they know what's coming, if it looks like they're ready, Omega will not be able to initiate that cleanly enough. It will be a big trade. What Omega, with how they're playing, looks like, look like is they're going for the most favorable trade, meaning they're playing a little bit more defensive. Oh, yeah. I think what I said, this positioning for Omega is going to be hard for Echo to break. Yeah, we, he sees the Lunox, but Edmax sees him as well with the dawning light. This is really good positioning here for the whole squad. The Mark Omega, they're looking to fight here with the Atlas repositioning. To defend their base. There's a huge swing in terms of utility and roles that uh, these teams have played. Dotting Light is now going to be used to start checking bushes. It's no longer used to clear waves. Well, it used to be used to clear waves. But now Ethelmax has on all the more important jobs. One is to not die, and then another is to make sure that they make it into the late game. Yeah. I like the fact that he went for a lot of cooldowns on uh, you know, the Savior. He went for the Enchanted Talisman first before the damage item. Usually, 
you do that when you are, uh, you know, when you are ahead to make sure that you keep on putting out these, uh, these immobilized spells against the enemy. But I also like the fact that he went for this item specifically to clear waves. Because the thing about their lineup is that it's not safe to clear waves against Echo because there's a Franco on the other side. Franco, the Brock in surprise as well. The three tanky presences, uh, heroes on the side of Echo, along with the fact that one of those three tanky heroes has an ultimate that can just completely change the picture of a team fight, which is the ultimate of that moment, as of how he can swing with major damage, thus healing himself. Uh, Omega are understandably being way more careful here, even though we were saying earlier Omega should probably try to be aggressive, yeah. pick up the tempo. They can't against this, this lineup. Yeah. I like the pacing of Echo though. Again, this is the step by step we were talking about earlier. Just to crush the, uh, the uh, resource control, Smart Omega, establish a lead such that you build up items way, way faster compared to Smart Omega. e Thesis is now capable of doing the e Thesis e Thesis things. Because the thing about this game is that these two heroes on the side of Echo, the gold lane and the uh, jungler are now standalone heroes. They don't need that much protection from uh, the other heroes in a way that Echo, really, Echo has now been able to set up a lot of camps around the map. Basically, map control belongs to them. Despite the amazing trades by Omega setup, they are up by one kill, right? Five to six and twelve minutes. It's just so difficult to think of how, with this item deficit, Omega can come back. Because, yeah, they have been kicking Brock, they have been kicking the Franco on Trimartisi and Yaoi, but that can only get you so far. Yep, again, Smart Omega cannot look to contest the neutral objectives here against Echo. They have to give it out. Pot. Still a huge problem for, uh, for Echo to crack the base of Smart Omega. Now that Kelra has reached the point where he deals so much damage and the flicker is ready. Yeah, it's what we would like to call in our rank games. Just look for that one set. That one set is what Omega does. The way we usually play. The way we usually Most play. Most <laughs> It's just Chapter 2 just eats one flicker ultimate to rule, completely turn around. The problem is Echo are positioning incredibly well. Uh, they're really not giving that opportunity to Omega. Yeah. By the way, I just want to highlight for the for the entire series, we haven't seen a conceal play yet. Oh, we did see a conceal retreat earlier, conceal yeah. re-engage, but nothing that wins team fight. Conceal yeah. set, nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing yet. major, nothing. There major. you go, the conceal. And it does pop a shield in bottom oh. and mid lane. Uh, I believe that is going to be a penetration. OMG lose their mid lane. Rising, there's a rising from the side and the back with a win. Oh, and now he has his back with a hook. That is going to be a shock. No, now we got the Mamba. Renzio wow. punches the rock. The crop that right into the ground. Hell, oh. very low. Oh. One for one trade. Oh, oh he's side. missed the oh. 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 the Barangay captain. Oh, Benny. Oh, Benny Cutie. They smell victory. It's so close. SMX is slowly turning purple. The hook. Two key hooks from Yahweh. And now Benny Cutie is like, all right. Guys, I'm sorry, but it's my time. I'm ready. He got his third kill of the game there with a double. But by oh my, the hooks from Yaoi. It was the starter for Echo. He took the right target. He was able to snag the Atlas from the base of Smart Omega. Ryzen found a good kick onto the Martisi, but they didn't have the damage to take out the Grok. But look at this. No set for you, Chapter, as the besties look to fight, but Yaoi found the upper hand. Look, the sniper damage right. onto the back line. The snipe, I feel like Keller would have been down to keep fighting there, but the fact that Benny Huey got to snipe yeah. him forced Keller back. That opened up the hook there yeah. onto the deer off. If he didn't back off, I'm pretty sure the Beatrix would have flickered it and used and popped the shotgun. Yeah. So Keldra, even though the Ruby DD's play was set up by the Xavier already, it was the right choice to just back off. Yeah. Because if he died there, game would have been over. Yeah, then if you do damage, if you don't, because Omega, even in their own base, were shooting blanks, like everything, what Echo had an answer for, and that put them at about an 8k gold lead right now in 15 minutes. Um, are Omega not ready yet? Are they lacking items? Kelra looks stacked. I mean, stacked. they're not lacking items per se. They're not lacking XP. They're lacking the initiation. Again, 
they need to utilize this app plus to find a perfect opportunity for them to secure some, uh, you know, some control in this game. And now uh, another good skill play, dawning light. Oh, it's going to be easy. Easy. They're going to go for it. Oh. it. Get hit by the way of the dragon. Look at Dowie. Oh, they do pop this immortality here. Oh. And the they fight. put the fight down onto the Chalk Mamba. And how did he spin it? Trying to survive. Down goes the Yowie. They get oh. hit by Delra. Back to trade it out. Down goes Horizon. Two for one. So far, that's the one. Renzi Lightning. The door. Oh. 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 Take it. They are not one more. Renzi is still punching. Oh. Oh. Omega 
want to end this year? Who will achieve the goal they're looking for in this game number three? As both teams are playing insanely. Midnight, what are you looking at? Leo Renmar, I have to say, Chapter is now once again fully confirmed a walking win condition. The immortality is now up. He now has oh. two rounds of lives to make sure that he gets the set against Echo. And now if you look at Echo, they just burn a lot of things on his side. And it's more likely than not that he might actually get a Fatal Lynx twice in this team fight, yep. given the Fatal Lynx plus fleeting time. Oh. <laughs> I am looking forward and now the gold lead is almost non-existent. Yeah. It's not a not at all, it's very close. This could boil down to Yaoi and Chatu, two of the most high-profile roamers in FPL Philippines Season 9. It might just boil down to them finding the play, the pick. Will it be Chatu? Will it be Yaoi? Will it be Echo? Will it be Omega? This is hard for Echo. They have to choose, choose one. They can only get one in a same, single skirmish. It's either Chatu or the Ludox. I think it's more viable for them to get Telra. Now, Yaoi, oh, he sees two. He sees two win conditions, and he says, nope, cannot. Sir, I cannot. Yeah, and look at the genius move here by Echo. Moving the Lord over to their side of the map, their side of the river. It does get reset. There is some semblance of frustration possibly coming here from the side of Echo because they've been inside Omega's base several times now and they're still wondering, why won't you die? Yeah, right, then look at this. Tank chose, now able to get some vision here for Echo. Can see a play? Oh, that wall didn't hit! Check out Chaknu. Deep inside. Get it. He has two. The bite, the, the bite! Hunt. The bloody hunt set in. Ryzen looking for targets. Count Easy switching over to the Lord. See what Easy? Get the power of nature. Chaknu with the... Renji! Oh, he missed! Perfect match. And he misses. Pushing oh, back. Jesus! Oh! Taken by Ryzen! See what Easy goes down! Off the immortality with the kick. Delra confirms the kill. One man down. Plus, Omega's first Lord is a 22-minute one. The change of destiny. Will it be the hook? Will it be the fatal Lynx? And in the end, the Lynx proved to be fatal indeed, as Omega are now mad marching in to the base of Echo. Die shall not retreat by Chaknu. No neutral objectives for you, good sir. Smart Omega now is going inside the base of Echo. It is a huge siege. Can Echo defend? Fatal Lynx for Omega. With a dawning light. Omega. Omega. Could make a beeline for Atlas! Oh, it is! Lethal inside their base! That forces immortality, that forces the winter curtain, down goes Curtisi. Curtisi still alive, survives through the way. Oh! Down goes Manny Cutie, another way the leaks in check, doesn't need it. Forces immortality, Yowie goes down. I'm sorry, Tristan, I love you. Yes, Joshua, could be over. That's it! Ring the bell!